Hey guys, my name is Lily and today I want to give you a news update from Austria but also from Germany. So first I would like to start with the inflation topic which is just a nightmare. Uh, here you can see an article. Now French fries in Austria cost five times more if you purchase them in a restaurant. So this is quite incredible. It's just French fries so it's not even meat and they are so damn expensive. Here you can see that Austria has a really bad inflation and only Croatia has a worse inflation right now in the European Union. And not only the French fries are rising in price, uh, here you can see an article which states that pretty much all foods are rising in the cost and price that you can purchase them for in a supermarket. So here it's saying that prices for food has risen by 17% in Austria and in Germany it's 23%. And here they are saying that chocolate is going to get 30% more expensive. So that's way more than just 4% inflation. Here they are saying that they have made an alarming prognosis for the future. They think that food prices are going to increase even in the next years. So that's really bad. That means that a lot of people cannot purchase enough of food anymore or they don't purchase enough of healthy food anymore. So now they start eating junk food, which is sometimes even um, less expensive than healthy food. And that's a really bad thing for poor people, of course. So now I'm really glad that I'm a home gardener and I'm producing a lot of tomatoes and lettuce and zucchinis and cucumbers and other food, carrots and stuff. So I'm really happy that I've set up my raised beds, I believe in 2018 when the wood was really cheap and everything was much cheaper. So yeah, I kind of saw it coming and I always said I want to grow my own food as much as I can. Of course, my garden is just a small suburban garden. It's not big enough to feed us for the entire year, but it's still making about 2000 euros of food. So if I had to go into the store and buy the same amount of food that I'm producing, it's about 2000 euros. And that's a lot of money that I'm saving for my family. Then also here it's saying that energy prices in Austria are still high. And also we have a lot of taxes on work. So if you get a salary, like for example, if you get like over 3000 euros of salary, you actually cost your boss 6000 euros. And that's no joke. So this is, yeah, this is the cost of taxes on your salary. And in Austria, it's super high. Then also we have a really high value added tax on all items that you purchase in the supermarket. So for example, a phone like this would cost 20% extra in value added tax. And for food, it's 10%. So it's really high. Uh, if I sell my knife here in Austria, I have to add 20% of value added tax. And that's a whole lot of tax, especially for the fact that we here in Austria, we are already paying so much income tax. So the average income tax or tax rate, including the social welfare, is 43%. So first they tax us with the income and then they tax us with the value added tax. And that's not enough for them. So they still tax us with inflation, which is a silent tax, which is making my money on my bank account less worth. And they also tax us with CO2 taxes and mineral oil taxes on every gas filling that you're doing at the gas station. So if you fill up your car, let's say um, with 100 euros, 50 euros are just taxes. And a lot of people don't have money left anymore at the end of the month. Now here I found an article which is titled Going to Bed Hungry. So 1 million Austrians, they try to save money or they just cannot uh, afford to buy good quality food. And they are now called nutritional poor. Nutritional poor, that's the new word. 
So here they are saying that 1.1 million Austrians or people living here uh, do not have enough of money either for purchasing enough of food or they are purchasing bad quality food. For 420,000 people uh, they have to leave out uh, meals and sometimes they don't eat for a couple of days. Guys, this is Austria. We are a highly industrialized country. We were always a wealthy country with a very high purchasing power, with a very solid middle class. And now 420,000 uh, people don't get enough meals in a day. Here's an interview with older people that say they have to look at every euro, uh, turn it around and think about what they are purchasing next. Uh, and people are disappointed of politicians. So all of the increases in rent, in energy prices, electricity prices, the food in the supermarket, it's leaving people frustrated. And also it's increasing criminality. So yeah, that really sucks, guys. It really does suck. Um, so I personally, I try not to purchase anything anymore, uh, only the essentials and I try to pay off my house loan that I have. So this is for me the number one priority, but still um, I talked about the food situation with my spouse and yes, the meat is getting really expensive, but still we said we want to afford this expensive organic meat. Uh, because health is the most important thing that we have. It's even more important than owning a house, I believe. So I want to be healthy and I want to eat the best food that I can. And this is why I buy organic uh, and GMO free food. And yeah, this is what we are doing. But everybody has to make their own decisions. And of course, if you don't have the money and you cannot, purchase expensive organic food then subsequently you will purchase really bad food which is full with GMO or pesticides and then you will lose your health and this is a problem so this is why poor people always have health problems as well most of the time okay the next topic is the Austrian health system and Austria was always a high-tax country and the citizens of Austria always have tolerated the high taxes because first of all we had a good health system with free health care, uh, we had a pension system which we still have and we had a safe country which is not the case anymore. It's not so safe anymore than 20 years ago. So now our health system is at a breaking point. So here you can see an article about the Austrian health system, which was working great in the past. We had the best doctors, the best surgeries, not a lot of waiting time if you had to get a surgery, but now it's really bad. So here we have some alarming figures. Uh, we actually have a two-class medicine in Austria. So although everybody has a social security number and healthcare, the point is that if you want to go to a doctor, it sometimes takes months until you get an appointment. And this is no joke. So maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, it did not take this long. But now it's taking sometimes three, four, five or six months until you can see a doctor. And I'm talking about the specialized doctors. So it doesn't take that long if you go to a general, I don't know, practitioner. Um, but for specialized doctors, it's taking long. And this is why now a lot of Austrians, they are going to private doctors and pay them a fee so they can get earlier treatment. And because of this, we have somehow developed a two-class medical system. So, and here, uh, there's a statistic which is saying that more and more doctors are just working privately anymore and they don't have a contract with the Austrian government anymore. 
So now the question arises, why should I pay so much taxes for a social healthcare system where I don't even get an appointment within a couple of weeks and then I have to take my already taxed money and go to a private doctor and pay this private doctor some money again. Yeah, and this is not the only problem that the healthcare system has. Uh, a lot of doctors are burned out because of the pandemic. And then also uh, here it's saying that soon the antibiotics for children uh, are going to go out. So we are out of antibiotics. And this has been going on for a couple of years now. And I really don't understand why the Austrian government is not reacting and building some um, medicinal plants here in Austria. I don't understand it. So they know that this is a problem for such a long time and still they don't do enough so we can have enough of antibiotics. It's crazy. I don't understand it. The next topic that I would like to talk about is solar. Now I believe that solar in general is a great technology especially for small off-grid homes. So I'm watching a lot of YouTubers who are living off grid and they are using solar together with generators in the winter time to be off grid and that's awesome. I'm also building a new power station right now in my garden shed because I want to recharge my e-bike with solar. So in a small scale I think solar is great and the technology itself is awesome. But in a big scale when you want to provide an entire country with electricity, it's just not as reliable as a lot of people want it to be. So here we have an article about big solar systems in Germany and how they could not produce 100% of electricity because of a sandstorm. Uh, so every year we are getting sand from the Sahara, from Africa and the sand blows up to Europe and it lays itself over every item you left outside. So you find this on your bikes outside or your garden shed. I even found it on my solar panel and I quickly washed it off. Uh, because if you have sand on your solar panels, you will make much less energy. So here they're saying that they only made 50% of energy on a beautiful sunny day. And that's a lot of loss. Because of this surprising lack of energy and electricity, they had to reactivate reserve plants. So that can be either coal plants or gas plants. Most of the time it's gas plants. Uh, and it also can be nuclear plants or hydro plants. So providing the population, an entire country with just solar is not possible. It's not possible because of the night time, of course, and it's also not possible with wind turbines because sometimes it's dark and it's not windy. I think we've come to a point where they actually cannot build more solar panels because you also have to actually use the electricity that's coming from the solar panels. And here in Austria now, a lot of people don't get contracts anymore with the power companies because they have problems bringing away electricity from those solar panels. Okay, the next topic that I would like to speak about um, is going to be the war. So here in Austria we are neutral, at least that's what we should be. But the left in Austria, some leftist newspapers they always try to undermine our neutrality. They tell us it's not important. And here in this article, they say that it's a lie. And we are basically lying at ourselves for being neutral. So the left seems to want to join NATO. The right in Austria seems to want to keep the neutrality and they want to stay out of the war. And that's Austria. Uh, in Austria, we have a compulsory military service, I believe, for six months. You have to join the army in Austria as a male. But now less and less uh, men are joining the military. Instead, they vote to join the social welfare service. So now more and more young men, 
they are opting to drive ambulances rather than joining the military service. And the more concerning news is actually coming from Germany because they now want to reinstate the compulsory military service. So apparently they are thinking about joining the war in Ukraine and they now need more soldiers. And now comes the thing guys, here you can find an article on my Twitter account which is from the German Focus magazine and it's saying that the German army now wants to make a list of all people who are fit to fight a potential war against Russia and if you take a look at this article the devil lies in the detail because here they're writing they are looking for people. Menschen. Menschen means people in German. They are not writing men. Okay? They are writing people. So now they are looking for all people who are fit to fight a war against Russia. Not only men. And I think they are writing it like this because they fear that a lot of men will say, oh, I'm not, I'm not a man anymore. I'm now a woman. I feel as a woman. I identify as a woman. And this is how I want to avoid having to join the military. I think this is what's coming up next. So yeah, guys, I'm really concerned about that. I really hope that Germany is not going to join the war. I already heard that the French Foreign Legion is already fighting in Ukraine. So this can quickly escalate. And I really do hope it does not come to that. And I'm feeling really bad for all of the soldiers on both sides that are dying now in Ukraine and Russia. Life is precious, guys. And the war over there is just a meat grinder and it's really without purpose. It's silly and stupid. War is crap and this is what it is. So yeah, um, this is it guys. If you want to see more updates like this, then make sure that you are subscribing to my channel and stay tuned till next time.